Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we're going to show you how to install and create a Tube Archivist server. Um, so, if you guys don't know, um, Tube Archivist is kind of a self hosted YouTube media server in which you can actually um, download YouTube videos locally so that you can watch it um, and not need internet essentially to watch it because it downloads all into the server and you can watch it anytime and you know kind of sync and download your own videos that you need um off of youtube um this was kind of one of the things that popped up on the self hosted reddit and i thought it was really cool because i have definitely gotten to a point where i have to like look up youtube videos on my phone on how to do something um when i'm messing with my firewall and because i take down the internet on my firewall um so this is probably something i'm going to use in the future where it's essentially like hey well i want to watch this video while i'm trying to do this but i'm going to take my internet down good good use case or if your internet's way too slow um this is also another good reason to be able to download the youtube videos and watch it um, locally so you don't have to worry about your internet being slow because all your family is watching Netflix or something else and taking down the internet so anywho this video is sponsored by myself uh, me myself and I so if you enjoy my videos um, want to sponsor me or send me some free swag or um, hardware uh, my email is in the description below so okay let's get started guys so with tube archivist um, it essentially runs on a docker container so we'll get started here first um log into our server 126 and we will uh install docker oh we should set the host name too ctl set host name tube archivist dragon not local and then we can just re-log in it will appear correctly okay and then we will install Docker because that's going to take a few minutes here. And then I will show you the GitHub repository for this. So um, we can also do DNS while we wait for that to load Tube Archivist. So they have their own GitHub here. Essentially, it's, you know, they advertise it. It's pretty good. There's, there's the, the Docker container here we will actually end up using their docker compose file or a very similar version here um so you can easily just get it off of their site here and we'll change some stuff up um in here just trying to show you that it works um but i mean just kind of looking at it there really isn't that many things they do a very good um, section on what is actually required for you to actually input what are optional stuff so kind of read through this but we'll, we'll essentially go through what like the minimum stuff that you will need to do here is um, so what we will do is oh I opened a new tab update our DNS so let's edit our DNS here real quick so we can do queries so arc uh tube archivist and a 126 and make sure you update your serial number here guys all right we'll commit that okay so that should be good we'll let, let that swing okay so docker is installed so we'll enable docker We'll start Docker, and then we need Docker Compose also. So let's get that from the GitHub, and let's make sure that it's executable. Boom. All right, so now that we have that, we can Docker Compose.yaml, and we will go in here and grab this. So let's open it raw, control paste. Um, I'm not gonna worry about these. We're just gonna use the directory, so we'll just slap, make it from that directory. Um, let's see, what else? Um, our time, my time zone is America, Chicago, but if you're on the East Coast, you can leave America, New York, um, but if you're somewhere else, you can make it somewhere else too, no biggie. Um, okay, so other volumes, so we'll just leave that here, leave this here. Okay, so the things here to kind of take a look at is, so there's the whole server. There is the Elasticsearch URL. You can leave that as default because it essentially links it back to um, this Elasticsearch here. So it'll sync back up to that. Um, the Redis host, same thing. It will be named the same thing down here. So we can leave that by default. 
I left these as default, and there's something that we have to do with that later. Um, we will name this dot dragon dot local here. Um, you should change the username and password to be something different here for your login, but I'm going to leave it as C. Um, and then I think everything else you can leave as default. Um, your last search password you should change also. Um, but when you change it here, you need to make sure you change it down here too so that they match. If they don't match, that also won't work. Um, but other than that, I think those are pretty much the only big changes that I um, think we need. So we will Docker compose this up. Um, but oh, it, it didn't copy correctly the the very top version. It just it just says version version. Oh, there we go. Um, but we will also need to do something afterwards because it will actually. Um, when I last install this, you actually run into the common errors for this mount point um, where you'll see this error and it's because of how the user ID and group IDs are set to 1000. Um, so we're going to need to do that so that the container can actually correctly use that storage, which I, I, I enjoy. This is probably one of the first ones that I've actually seen a like common errors in, in their GitHub that actually like kind of tells you, hey, if you're running this, you'll re probably run to this error. This is how you fix it, which is actually kind of neat. Um, so it will load and there is that exception for the uh, Elasticsearch cluster that is exactly this. So we will control all that because that will fail. Um, so, and then we will do a ch own one thousand zero, and then we mounted it to um, root es. So now, if we were to list it, we can see that the es directory is owned by one thousand as the owner and root as the group for zero. So now we should be able to do doc compose up, and this time we would just detach it so we don't have to worry about the it scrolling in the console. Um, and then hopefully everything comes back up, up for a few seconds, haven't seen restarts. So it runs on port 8000 by default. So if we were to do HTTPS tube archivist dot dragon dot local 8000, oh, HTTP, not HTTPS, sorry guys. We could put an Nginx server, make it HTTPS, and that would work too. <laughs> okay, phew. For a second, I was like, did I type that in right? I, it, I, for some odd reason, I can't like type archivist. In, in my head, it just doesn't register <laughs> all the time. Okay, so, um, cat doc compose. So the login, as, as we mentioned, was up here that you set it as the variable, so. We left it as default, but you should definitely update it, right? So we will do that. And the password was a very secret. And there we go. So this is essentially how it looks. There, it, It's actually pretty slick in my opinion. So what we'll do is add a channel. Um, so in this case, you can put the channel ID, URL, or of a video of a channel. So what we'll do, you know, is go to like YouTube.com. Um, we'll look up slash Drew real quick because clearly you guys, you guys, you guys love. And if you haven't seen my latest video, we actually did create a static HTML site in GitLab Pages self-hosted. Um, but this video will be released later, so there'll probably be other videos between that and this. So um, we'll just copy this, but you can copy any video from any. Um, person that you want um, and then you can hit subscribe here so now this is going to subscribe to my channel so give it a second um, so now there is essentially total channels that my two archivist is looking at um, you can see I have 247 subscribers thank you all you guys for those of you who did subscribe and like my content I appreciate that um, but now you can go to the downloads page and you can rescan subscriptions. This will essentially scan all the videos that I have 
on my page. Um, also, other thing you can see uh, that it's looking up to 50, even though I have more than 50 videos. There is actually settings in here that you can go that you can actually, you know, scan for more than 50, scan for whatnot. 50 just looks like it's the default. So if you do want to switch that, feel free to switch that. There's also throttling in case your internet you don't want to just use all your internet to download. You will want to use this and take a look at that. So, but most of it looks pretty self-explanatory in regards to, you know, just setting a different number or whatnot. Um, oh, dog theme, yeah. Does dog theme, okay. I was gonna say, this looks like dog theme. <laughs> okay, so now it should um, appear, oh yeah. So now we got some videos appearing here. So it will show you all the videos that I have uploaded up to the, the last 50, um, but you can obviously do more. So there's two ways you can download videos. Um, so you can download my, my videos or anyone else's um, by clicking just download now on the video, or you can click start download up here when, when all these get added to the queue. So essentially when you rescan subscriptions, everything will be added to a download queue and you can start download to download everything in the queue, or you can just download individual videos that you want. Um, this is, good to know because essentially say for example you know someone has like a thousand youtube videos and you know that's going to take up i don't know how much space but your your system doesn't you know take up have that much space to allocate so you only want to download the few that you need to reference offline or when, the ones that you want to watch so in this case um we're just going to just download one so we just hit download on this so you'll see that process video it's downloaded uh it'll go and in this case it was only a, a few hundred megs that didn't look that much so now that the download is complete, you can go to home and you can actually click on the video here and you can see that in my video, I, I, I muted so you can't actually hear audio here, but um, you can see that the video just plays within Tube Archivist and you don't have to worry about anything. Um, I will um, say you can also see like number of views, number of likes. So it, it does actually get some uh, YouTube stats while while you do this, so um, pretty nice. So now you can essentially watch videos while you're offline after you download them and do some more home lab stuff as as you break your own home internet. But just so you guys know, I did not tell you you should break your home internet. Your family would not approve. <clears throat> My family would not approve. <laughs> so if you do have to break your home internet, probably plan a time. Tell them to go go get some ice cream while while you do it. So, anywho, that's how you set up a Tube Archivist uh, server and download some videos from YouTube. So, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.